Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're about to venture back into the nether once again because we have one heck of a task ahead of us. We are about to convert our double blaze spawner into a working blaze farm and that's going to require a lot of work, a lot of preparation and a lot of planning and then a lot of... I guess, blaze fighting in the middle. <laughs> and then we will hopefully get ourselves a working spawner. So the first task in preparing one of these things is containment to start off with, because blazes, as you guys will know, are a little bit volatile and they don't adapt to the same spawning rules that a lot of other mobs do, especially when it comes to these isolated spawners out here, because blazes can spawn in a higher light level than most mobs. So it isn't just enough to light up the spawner around it because as you might imagine blazes like to set stuff on fire and as a result you'll find a lot of fire springing up over here but the blazes still spawn when they should in theory be completely like swamped by the light level and unable to spawn if it was a normal type of spawner so what we need to do is find another way of limiting the spawns. Now we could absolutely spam this entire area with glowstone blocks or some other light source that gives off a light level of 15. Because I think they have to spawn in a light level of 12 or below. So that's a lot, a lot lighter than the usual 7 and below that you get from a lot of other mob spawners. That in itself is also a little bit unpredictable and can take a little while to set up. And it's a little difficult to maintain while we're working around this area. So what I figured I would do instead is grab myself a splash potion of fire resistance, pop that down, deal with any blazes that come up, and completely surround the spawner in blocks. Now the cool thing you will find about this is that blaze spawners, much like the overworld spawners you'll find, can only spawn those mobs within a 9x9x3 area. So 9x9 square and 3 high is the maximum spawning range of these spawners, even when you are right up close to them like this. And so if we just completely surround this thing in blocks, it's going to reduce the spawnable space of the spawner down to the point where it no longer has anywhere that it can put blazes. When it spins up like that, it's not going to produce anything. So the best way to isolate this thing right now is just to cover this entire space in blocks. I'm going to use diorite for this because I've got a decent amount of it that's not being used for anything else right now. And we can just surround this entire entire thing in solid blocks so that there's no more spawnable space left for the spawner. We're going to do this with both the spawners here in the nether because I have another one that is just over there that needs converting as well and that's going to allow us a little bit of peace while we work on the rest of the contraption that's going to help us farm these blazes. Just to very quickly demonstrate this to you before we move on to the other blaze spawner, the original blaze spawner, the first one, the one you just saw me covering in diorite, is now completely covered and as you can see Nothing seems to be spawning anymore. Nothing is really popping up around here at all. And the reason for that is because this thing has no spawnable space left. There are no gaps in the diorite anywhere. This is about five and a half stacks of diorite, I think, something like that. I, I miscalculated the amount of diorite I needed to bring because I was going to do the second spawner over there as well. So I'll need to go and grab a little bit more. But that is the maximum spawnable space of this spawner and it's going to make sure that no blazes can spawn either above or below this thing. Now of course you could do this with any kind of material, it doesn't have to be diorite, but the main thing is just to use a material that stands out. If you completely surround it in netherrack, you're not going to know exactly what it is you're breaking away when you come to clear this out later and you might risk breaking the spawner. And breaking the spawner at this point is the last thing we want because this double blaze spawner setup with two blaze spawners in close proximity to each other is actually really valuable. So we don't want risk this going to waste. But I'm going to head back to the overworld, grab a little bit more diorite, get the other blaze spawner completely covered, and then we'll proceed on to phase two. There we go, two completely encased blaze spawners. Nothing is going to be spawning here while we are working on the next step of this particular operation, and the next step is to clear out an area around each of these. Now bear in mind that blazes will still spawn in other parts of a nether fortress just randomly, so don't be frightened if you see the occasional blaze in here. Nothing has gone wrong with the spawners themselves, it's just that natural spawning has dictated a blaze shows up in the fortress every now and again. The next thing we're going to do, like I said, is clear out around these because we want to see what's going on. We want to be able to figure out what the best space is for us to stand an AFK at these two spawners. And we're also going to figure out exactly where we're going to send the blazes. Now, I introduced slime block flying machines at the end of the last episode, and that's for good reason, because we're going to be using those slime block flying machines to sweep the blazes from one side of the spawner 
over to another side where they're going to be dropped into a, an area that they can be collected and killed easily. We're going to do that with both of these spawners. So having a cleared out area around here kind of means that we can figure out where the best place is to sweep them all. And with that, we can also figure out where the best place is for us to stand to make sure that the spawners are still activated and sending blazes our way. So I'm going to spend a bit of time digging out all of this netherrack. I'll probably need to go and repair my tools here and there. I'll also need to be vigilant of lava blocks in the walls, but that's okay. I've got plenty of blocks on me and we're going to be grabbing a few more when it comes to digging this whole place out. And also, I have a couple of potions of fire resistance for emergencies. But for the most part, thankfully, this nether fortress is pretty much encased in netherrack, so it should just be a case of digging the area out without any interference from ghasts and such like. Some time later, I've actually surrounded each of the spawner areas in glass and added some cyan terracotta on the top to prevent the blazes from drifting up too far. I've given them a little bit of headroom though because I can't remember if the blazes actually spawn with their head height above there or their head height is in the block above and I don't want them to get in there and suffocate or limit the spawning space in any way. So hopefully we shouldn't have any kind of problems with that. Now comes the tricky part. We need to dig up a little bit more of this and add in the slime block flying machines and some material we can use to isolate them. And for that, I've chosen some black stained, uh, <laughs> glazed terracotta rather, some black stained clay, as I used to call it, uh, glazed for some terracotta. And that is mainly because it just looks good in the surroundings of the nether and is going to look good as a repeated pattern. Now, of course, we could do the thing where you kind of alternate each time and kind of produce a pattern that way, but I'm not going to bother too much with that because the glazed terracotta here is more functional than it is aesthetic. Like, it's very easy to create really nice aesthetic patterns with this stuff, but that's not really going to help in the context of this. And it's also quite hard to do that in a wall and, and placement of this stuff is a little bit weird. So instead, what we're going to do is use that just as a lining for some of the areas where the slime block flying machine needs solid blocks around it. The problem with using solid blocks as a floor in here is that potentially other stuff could spawn in there. There's a chance that a zombie pig man could get into the machine, and then if one of those ends up in the kill chamber and I hit it, then all of the other zombie pig men in the area are going to aggro on me, and they're going to be a little bit confused. So <laughs> what I figured I would do is bring some leaves with us as well, and in cases where we need to isolate the slime block flying machine from the floor, we can use leaves. And that's not going to affect blaze spawning because remember blazes and any mobs that spawn from a spawner like this will actually spawn in mid-air. So they don't actually need a solid block to spawn on in the first place. And for that, we're going to be using leaves and we're probably going to coat any of the floor that isn't affected by the flying machine in glass. But that shouldn't be a problem here. I think we should be all right. I'm a little bit paranoid because I'm getting blaze crackling noises in the subtitles right now, but I actually can't hear the sound effect itself. So that blaze is probably generating elsewhere in the fortress and is far enough away that it's not going to present a problem for the spawner. As near as I can tell, it's like behind here somewhere. I think there's a, <laughs> there's a blaze in this room back there with the wither skeleton. Yeah, there it is. Like, it's amazing how far away the subtitles will pick up noises from, because that is nowhere near the area where we're working. It's certainly not come from the spawners in any way. Anyway, let's get on with the spawners, because uh, I'm getting too distracted here. I actually just realized that I built this area here, <laughs> this spawner on the left-hand side, a little bit too large. It actually, the die right here only needs to be 9x9, nine nine. it's currently 9x11, so I'm just going to shave two blocks off the sides, one on each side, and I think we'll be good here. Oh no, they've come for me. It's the mob. Let's get them. <laughs> they, they clearly just spawn at this intersection of the corridor here, so I will take those guys out, but this is definitely highlighting the need to isolate this blaze spawner. Once we have it built, we need to do a little bit of decorating and get away all these other blazes <laughs> so that they don't interrupt while I'm AFKing at the machine. But yeah, for the most part, this has all been working out very well so far. I think we're ready to start the slime block flying machines now. And this is going to be a bit of a tricky proposition, but we shouldn't have too much of a problem with it. We're going to start them off, I think, one layer below here. This is getting lower and lower each time, so I have a feeling my AFK spot is probably going to be somewhere separate from the actual killing chamber, but we'll see how the maths of it works out. I've dug down a little bit further underneath this spawner, and we're going to set up our first flying machine over here. What we want to do is have it go from side to side, so it starts over here and ends over there, or maybe starts over here and ends over there. The direction of it is not important because it's going to be kind of shuttling back and forth between these two walls and sweeping any of the blazes it encounters into a pit on this side, so that the two pits are going to be going to be channeling blazes from here 
and here into a central kill spot here. That's how we're going to calculate all of this. So what we need to do is set up a system for the slime blocks to be pushed back and forth above here, sweeping the blazes as they go. And that's going to require the ingredients I've got on me. I've got some obsidian to stop the observer flying machines. I've got some slime blocks, some pistons, and some redstone repeaters so that we can do a little trick with the observers and activate them when they go past. Now, the first thing we're going to do is build up one of the flying machines that I've shown you in previous episodes. We're going to do that here. And so so we're going to probably actually build it a little bit further back. We're going to take advantage of the fact that an arm of a slime block flying machine can actually be relatively large as long as we still make sure we're sticking to the amount of slime blocks that a piston can push out once. So 12 blocks maximum is about as long as one of the arms of these things can go. And remember, it's also got to push this sticky piston that's facing in the opposite direction and has the other slime blocks attached to it. Now, we are also going to have to remember to isolate these slime blocks from anywhere that they might stick. For example, any of the netherrack and stuff around here, we are going to have to replace with the uh, the glazed terracotta if it means the slime block is going to come to rest on them. We're also going to try and limit the amount of spawnable space down here, remember. So we will get to that in just a second. For now, we're going to have these observers facing upwards like so into the slime block next to the piston. We're going to put another one there. And this flying machine is now primed, meaning that if we end up hitting one of the netherrack blocks, it's going to start moving. Next up, we have to build a way for this flying machine to stop when it gets here and be detected by something that's going to send a signal into the observer telling it to go back in the opposite direction. For that, we're going to use another observer stuck here, and we're going to add an obsidian block behind that. Now, when this observer comes into dock at this station here, it's not going to be able to be pushed any further by the slime block because this obsidian block is an immovable block and it's going to prevent it from being pushed any further. So what we've got there is a pretty effective stopper. Now, the observer here is going to be sending a redstone signal into this obsidian block. It's going to be detected by this redstone dust. It's going to have a repeater facing into that set to an even number of ticks. Now this is quite important because the the signal that we're sending in here could be too fast. If it pulses the observer here twice, then that could potentially break the flying machine. So it needs to be set to either two ticks or four ticks. And note that these are timings for a single player world. On a multiplayer world, this might actually vary thanks to server lag and server tick timings, that kind of stuff. And if I've done this right, I should be able to break this netherrack block good and the flying machine doesn't move. That's a good sign. So once we break this netherrack block here, we uh, will actually have this whole thing move and we're going to set up a trap door to kind of flap open and closed next to this redstone repeater and that's what's going to be what sends the flying machine on its way when it's activated. Now the cool thing about this is all you need to do is input a redstone signal here like a lever or something like that, and it's actually going to stop the flying machine in its tracks, meaning we can turn the machine on and off when we want to. And of course, now that I look at this, I realize it's probably going to be a better idea to have that switch over here where the player is going to be standing, and it makes more sense to build this mechanism on this side where it's a little bit closer. And with that done, it's time to build the same thing on the opposite side here with the observer detecting this observer coming into dock rather than this one, because that's the one that's going to send it back over to the opposite side. And this time around, because we don't have to worry about setting the machine off, we can leave the trap door here in place. So this is the machine that's going to send this flying arm back and forth. And I think we should be ready to give this a quick test run. Now, let me quickly, yeah, I've got some stone here, thankfully. Let me quickly make a lever so that we can turn this thing on and off because I don't want this thing to be rattling around the entire time while I'm building the rest of this. But a simple redstone signal into there should activate this and will prevent it from moving in the slightest. But now if I break this netherrack block, uh, let me just quickly check that nothing else like it should be stopping there. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Actually, we might want to build this one block further back. So let me do that real fast. The reason for building it one block further back is that I don't want any blazes to end up spawning and then falling onto this trap door because eventually enough of them could end up spawning there that the spawner would reach its limit and wouldn't want to spawn anything else. But everything would just be trapped on there. I mean, it might flap up and down once or twice and let the blazes through, but it works quite fast, this mechanism. So let's give it to try this way. Moment of truth, if we remove this netherrack block, the flying machine heads over to the opposite side and of course it impacts on that trap door because I haven't built that right. Okay, let's try that again. I've sent the flying machine back. We will add a trap door on top of there. And you'll notice the trap door over here flips once or twice. There we go, sends the flying machine back. This trap door over on here does the same thing. 
And we have a flying machine, which should be sweeping any blazes that spawn in here into one wall or the other. So the idea is to have a two block trench behind where this flying machine comes to rest and taking in the full surface area of this. So the walls and stuff are going to be solid down to the ground, making sure that no blazes are going to escape unless they get pushed into this trench here. Now you might be wondering why we're not doing this with something like water streams. Now, <laughs> let me remind you, water cannot be placed in the nether, so it is impossible to create a water stream here. Likewise, lava streams don't actually affect nether mobs all that much because they aren't affected by lava damage and therefore lava physics don't really apply to them either. They just kind of wander around in lava, even if it's flowing in a specific direction. So the best way of moving blazes around is either to take advantage of their AI and kind of trick their pathfinding into moving, which is what more modern blaze spawner designs do, or just to shove them around a whole bunch, which is what we're doing with this flying machine. I've actually brought some armor stands in here as a test so I can show you what's going on here. We might actually have to replace a couple of blocks here and there around here because the armor stands might actually glitch out into these blocks when they get pushed and require some some kind of manipulation here so they're not necessarily the best example but if we activate the flying machine now you'll notice that it bounces all of the armor stands in that direction towards these blocks over here and then when the thing reverses direction it would do the same thing on the opposite side now what we need is a barrier of solid blocks on this side for the blazes to rebound from and of course that's going to mean using some of the glazed terracotta to isolate it from the slime blocks. So I've added in these two rows of glazed terracotta, one to isolate this back wall here and another one here for the slime blocks to come to rest on because it's important that the slime block sweeper goes over the area where the blazes are going to be and then pushes them back from the opposite side. I'll put some armor stands in to demonstrate if we pop those down on the ground here and then when we activate this, the slime block sweeper will actually go through them for a second and it might cause a little bit of damage to the blazes as they stand there and then it's going to sweep the armor stands back over into this hole like so we're going to flick this lever the flying machine is going to do its thing the armor stand should all come to rest against this block and then yeah it's going to sweep them over in a kind of curtain towards the hole where they're going to drop down now because this is technically a spawnable block for mobs like zombie pigmen for example we're actually going to cover that over with one additional block of glazed terracotta there so the slime blocks are still going to be able to come to rest in this recess here we're going to leave this one open because that's already got a trap door there and we'll build another one on the opposite side, like so should be fine to activate that because it's not got a flying machine in front of it right now. And that is going to be the kind of barrier that's going to prevent the slime block from going any further. And that is going to prevent zombie pigmen from spawning in the space and causing too much hassle for our blaze spawner. Next thing to do is going to be to cover the entire floor here in some sort of transparent block so we don't get the same thing happening inside the spawner itself. So the floor down here could be leaves, it could be glass. I'm going to use glass because I feel like that'll probably look a little bit nicer. But at the same time, I'm going to worry about where exactly the blazes are being pushed once they end up in this trench. There's going to be another set of flying machines that's going to move the blazes all the way along to here. And once they get here, I need to figure out exactly where the intersection of these two spawners is going to be. So it's one block from either side. I think our drop spot is going to be about here. The idea being that we can collect blazes from both spawners into the same spot and then they can die nice and easily just swiping at them with a sword. That's the plan. So I'm going to set up the same flying machines on this side for this spawner. I'm going to do that off camera because you guys have seen the setup of this one by now and I'll be back when that's been done. There we go, I've set up the flying machine on this side and I've started to coat the floor of this one with a layer of nether brick just because it looks nice and then a layer of black glass which in theory should prevent mobs from spawning in here. Now unfortunately these pigmen spawned in the process of me doing that but feels like a good idea for a live test of the flying machine, doesn't it? So let's give that a try. They will suffocate in the slime blocks a little bit, but there we go. Success. The pigmen have been pushed into there, and those ones that are sat one block or two further down aren't actually going to be affected by this. But look, <laughs> they're, they're just walking around and getting back up again, so those guys aren't a problem. By the way, if you ever want to clear zombie pigmen out of an area you're working with in the nether, but you don't want them to all aggro on you, get an axe enchant it with smite 5 and then you should be able to just one shot them obviously you have to bear in mind the cooldown you have to make sure the axe is fully raised in your hands but then 
one swift chop and they should actually go down nice and quick. You don't even need to crit them. So that's something you can do. Right now I don't have a smite 5 axe and I don't need to leave the nether to make one. So I'm not going to worry too much about these guys. As long as their natural pathfinding continues to have them wander around a little bit and they get out of my way while I'm building, that's fine. And ultimately they might be a good test of the machine once it's all ready to go. I'm now in the process of figuring out how the slime block sweeper is going to work for this trench that the blazers are going to fall into. And this is where we encounter this problem because I want this floor to be all transparent blocks so that nothing will spawn on it. Even when the slime block machine is undocked from here, there will be a two block high space above it where stuff could spawn. However, slime blocks are going to stick to glass and that's going to make this impossible to move. So what we're going to do is take out the glass here and replace it with leaves. Leaves will also be unspawnable much like glass, but they are a transparent block which the slime blocks will not push. So that's kind of why we brought the leaves with us in the first place. And it's going to look real ugly, let me tell you. But this place already looks ugly enough with all of this stained terracotta around. So I keep stalling it, calling it stained terracotta, glazed terracotta. <laughs> Anytime we have this glazed terracotta around, it's not necessarily going to look the best in large quantities like this. So I think we'll have to forgive the leaves, but the leaves are going to be really useful because that's going to isolate this slime block frying, flying machine, frying machine. Man, I wish there were frying machines in Minecraft. <laughs> we can isolate this slime block flying machine from the floor over here, and that's going to make it nice and straightforward. We're not going to have to worry about setting the trench one block over and have them bounce a little bit further and have some end up staying there by mistake or something like that. No, we can just set up a slime block flying machine nice and simple over here. Make sure there's no blocks around it like so. And this is going to go much the same as the one up there, but it's only going to have two slime blocks in it. It's going to be this one, which is going to push the blazes along here. And the other one is just necessary for returns. So these flying machines can actually be very small if you need them to be. Okay, it took me a few rebuilds to get this thing actually working. For some reason, I just kept building it backwards and I couldn't figure out why. But that seems to be working now. I'll get a lever in a minute to isolate this thing. But in the meantime, it's time for a live test involving this pig man and a few armor stands. Let's activate the flying machine over here. That should push the pig man and the armor stands over to this side. And the pig man should get bounced out of there and into this trench. And yeah, okay, we do need to make sure that lot is covered over. But aside from that, it seems to work in principle. Okay, one more update. I actually had to rebuild the entire thing one block down because unfortunately, where it was before, this flying machine going back and forth, you'll see there's only a one block gap in there. It was actually causing the observers to stop this flying machine when the two of them interacted, which they eventually would regardless of what cycles they were on. So I think, yeah, I think we are, <laughs> we are good to go now and we can use the pigmen once again as an example. One of them got into the machine here. He's going to get pushed along into the gap on this side and then he's going to land in the trench there and he's going to get pushed along into what's ultimately going to be the kill mechanism. Perfect, that actually worked out. Good, <laughs> good, okay. Glad to know that part of this is finally coming together. And what I figured I would do is instead of worrying about getting all of the blazes into a one block wide trench, instead I'd just make this trench two by two and have the killing area down here be like a a two by two kind of triangle shape. And I think that's gonna work out okay because the blazes will still gather in an area where we can use the sword sweep attack to dispatch them, but it's also going to mean that we don't complicate things too much over here. So all that's really left to do at this point is to install a similar flying machine on this side to sweep all of the blazes into the same area and then I think we'll be good to go. Okay, a minor headache later. I think this is all getting done. Now, <laughs> that guy has wandered up into there, which is a bit of a problem, but not to worry. When the blazes drift down and this thing is moving, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I've had to isolate these two redstone circuits in particular because occasionally one was triggering the other when it came back in here and that was causing problems for the other flying machine. But not to worry, I think that should be working now. So we're going to set these two on their way and those are each gonna go off in different directions and they're going to be returned by these machines on the opposite side, which are always going to be on. And as you can see, they come back at different times. So if that one tripped now and it tripped the trap door on this one, then that could cause problems later. Now, why isn't that flicking on and off again? 
No, I was overthinking it. We just needed another observer detecting the signal output from this observer, which puts it into this obsidian block over there. There we go. Nice and easy. <laughs> that, that makes a little bit more sense than what I thought I had to do. And I can actually set this repeater to one tick delay because between the two of them, they're making a two tick delay. So the odd number just broke the flying machine here. And that's that's fine. I can fix this now. And now we can actually run the tests on the floors themselves. Wait, what? There we go. Apparently we just need a weirdly long delay on that flying machine. Well, that's fine. We can send the other ones off independently. And I think it's time to test it all together with these circuits. Now, hopefully everything that is trapped in here, pigmen, armor stands, it should all end up falling into this space down here at the base of the obsidian. We've got a pigman down there already. Let's see if we can give this a try. It looks like one pigman might be caught in the machine there, and that's fine. It doesn't matter. They'll just take suffocation damage until they die. Not a big deal, but it looks like a couple of the armor stands are ending up slightly too close. That that may just be a result of the... Oh gosh, I need to get out of here. <laughs> that may just be a result of them not being bounced super well by the slime block flying machine, so we should be able to do something about that. I think this is all working now. <laughs> Fingers crossed this is all working now, and this is the first time I've ever done any kind of project of this size, and it's the first time I've ever converted a blaze spawner, so I am probably going to get a few things wrong and need to troubleshoot as we go, but if I'm right... Down here, yes, we should have the legs of those pigmen. And that is where our, our little killing chamber is going to be. This is where we are going to be doing most of the dispatching of the blazes. And the idea is that they're going to drift down into an area down here a little bit further. And we're just going to be able to swing our sword and kill them. Now, I've decided we're probably just going to make the, the kind of killing area like an L shape. Just to kind of to, to allow for entity gramming to not take place. And just to make the whole slime block thing a little bit easier for me. So when it comes down to it, what we're working with is a room like this and of course we'll need to make sure that the blazes don't spot us and aggro on us because then they start to fly upwards and that can be a problem but I think what we'll probably do is install some sort of mechanism where we can trap them in here once we've gathered enough some sort of lever that will push blocks over and prevent the blazes from flying up any further now the problem right now is we've got a bunch of pigmen in there but that shouldn't be a problem all we'll need to do is you know get away for 128 blocks make sure the pigmen despawn and then when we come back we can probably open up these blaze spawners and actually let this thing run. Now, I will have to do a little bit of decorating and stuff off camera. I need to make sure that the blaze spawners are sealed off so the blazes don't see me and aggro on me. But it's gonna it's gonna be quite straightforward, I think. All we need to do is seal off these areas where there are gaps. The blazes won't be able to see us through the glass and everything from that point onwards <laughs> should run quite smoothly. Okay, I think all of this has been sealed off. I think it's all ready to be given a try. Now comes the difficult part. Now comes the part where I have to stash a bunch of my stuff in here and get this potion of fire resistance out and uh, hope that I've done this right. So <laughs> we need to actually try this with blazes now. We need to go through and take out all of the diorite, making very certain that we do not hit the spawner in the process. And then hopefully the blazes shouldn't aggro on me for too long. I can block this back up again with glass and we'll be able to give this thing a test. We'll probably just test the one spawner for now but the other one should be okay. Oh, first, let me run away and despawn these pigmen. Be right back. Okay, it looks like the pigmen are out of the machine. <laughs> Let's take out all the diorite. Oh, gosh. I'm really scared. I'm really not certain what's going to happen here, but I think it should all go to plan. Yep, the blazes are already setting me on fire. <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem as long as... Yep, there it is. There's the spawner. We need to be very careful not to break that. And you, my friends, can get out of here. The problem, of course, being that blazes can still do melee damage to you if they get close enough. And I'm having to look up at the ceiling right now to break all of this entire right. The fire is not an issue thanks to the fire resistance potion, but oh boy. <laughs> the blazes, if they get too close, if there's too many of them in here, could seriously do some damage. And I need to make sure I'm eating. Okay, folks, that should do it. Now I just need to grab some ender pearls and get out of here real fast. There we go. <laughs> now, if we close this off, and the blazes finish getting aggro on me, they should all drift down to the floor where the flying machine can take care of them. So let's switch this on, let's switch this on, and let's see how we do. I like the fact that we've at least got this made out of glass so we can see it all in action, but the blazes are being pushed over into the trench and they're getting swept away by the other flying machine. And obviously this, this section right here is a problem. We'll need to close that up with something so that they don't aggro on me and see me through there while I'm AFK. But if we drop down here, 
We've got some blazes waiting for us in the kill chamber. Fantastic stuff. This is all going to work out very well as long as we manage to get them out of aggro range and they don't end up fireballing me. So we'll figure that out off camera, I think. We'll do that between episodes, and I'll come back and do a follow-up episode for this one, another two-part farm episode. But I think this has been a blazing success. <laughs> and once the other spawner is free as well, we should be able to farm blazes to our heart's content. It means free fuel, it means a ton of XP, this should be a great thing to have around. But that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.